All right, how's everybody doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and we're going to take a look at finding the exact values of composite functions for the inverse trig functions. Now, you've got to remember what a composite function is. That's just a function made up of another function inside of it. So we're going to take a look at these six properties for trig functions. Now, what you've got to pay attention to are the outside part and the inside part anytime you're dealing with composite functions. So in general, the outside function is always going to give us the same type of answer. We're always going to be looking to find the same thing. So whether we're trying to deal with our outside function being arc sine or arc cosine or arc tangent, that answer will always give us the same type of thing, as will the other type of outside functions where it's just sine, cosine, or tangent as our outside function, that again will give us the same thing, but it'll give us something different than if our outside function was one of the inverse trig functions. So let's just kind of take a general look at arc sine. If arc sine is our outside function, what this is going to ask us to find is the angle. So anytime the outside function, whether it's arc sine or arc cosine or arc tangent, we're always going to be trying to find an angle. On the other hand, if the outside function is a regular trig ratio, meaning just sine, cosine, or tangent, then we're just trying to find a trig ratio. Those are the two main differences between what it is that you're trying to get at as an answer for each one of these types of problems. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one of our first examples here, and we're just going to work with our properties for arc, sine, and sine. Now the first thing that you want to do is you want to ask yourself, self, what am I trying to find? Well, if you look at our two properties, we're, we're going to be using the first property, which means we're going to be finding an angle. So first thing I want to do is I want to take a look at my angle that's on the inside, this pi over 5. And what I want to ask myself is pi over 5 in between this range of negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. If you're not sure how to do this, some people might be able to look at that and go, yeah, I know it is. But if you're not sure, then get a common denominator for each one of those. So from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, that's the same thing as 5 pi over 10, negative 5 pi over 10 to positive 5 pi over 10. So that would be the range that we're looking at. Now pi over 5, that is the same thing. If I change that so the denominator is 10, pi over 5 is the same thing as 2 pi over 10. And 2 pi over 10 is definitely within that range so I can use my property here I, I almost call it like a shortcut where basically these two pieces kinda cancel out and all you're going to be left with is just that angle which in this case is pi over 5 now let's take a look at this one 5 pi over 4 is our inside angle as part of our inside function and again we're trying to find the angle because I've got arc sine on the outside now 5 pi over 4 most of you guys are probably pretty good you recognize where that is on the unit circle so if I'm taking a look at 5 pi over 4 on the unit circle, so I'm just going to kind of draw this real quickly, 5 pi over 4 is going to be over here in quadrant number 3. My outside function is arc sine, so I've got to pay attention to my domain restriction. So I've got to be within this spot right here, and I've got to get all the way back into one of those two spots. Now, since I'm dealing with sine, I want to take a look at a couple of things. First thing I want to do is I want to remember this kind of acronym, the ASTC right here, because that's going to tell me the sine, S-I-G-N, of the function I'm dealing with. And on the inside function, I've got sine of 5 pi over 4, so the value right here of 5 pi over 4 is going to be negative, because here in quadrant 3, tangent is positive, which means sine is negative. So when I look over at the two quadrants, quadrant 1 or quadrant 4, only one of those is where sine will be negative, and that's over here and is where I want to end up. But I'm starting at 5 pi over 4. So what I want to do is go backwards that much to get to that spot. Now, since I'm going back, now this is where you have to be able to count. I'm going back one, two, three quadrants. And each quadrant is 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 5 pi over 4 and I'm going to subtract 3 times 90 degrees or 270 degrees, which is the same thing as 3 pi over 2. Now I've got to get a common denominator here, so my common denominator is going to be 
fourth. So 3 pi over 2 is the same thing as 6 pi over 4. And when you evaluate this, 5 pi over 4 minus 6 pi over 4, you get negative pi over 4. Now if I compare this to my domain restriction up here, of being between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Negative pi over 4 is within there, so this value for this composite function is negative pi over 4. So in this case, even though the angle that we started with, 5 pi over 4, was not within our restricted domain of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, remember, you can find a coterminal angle somewhere around the circle that'll have the same value that we're looking for. So at 5 pi over 4, the spot around the, that has the same value is going to be at negative pi over 4. Now on to our second property. So in both of these problems, we're trying to find the trig ratio. So what I want to do is just kind of pay attention to my numbers and see, okay, are they within this range of negative 1 to positive 1? And 5 over 6 is definitely within that range. So these two, again, they'll just kind of cancel out, and your answer is just going to be 5 over 6. Now, 5 over 4, you should know that, that if you were to change that quickly to a decimal, you get 1.25 for that. And that is definitely not in that range of negative 1 to 1. So this one does not have an answer. So you have no solution, and you can either write that as no solution. Sometimes people just write the empty set. But either way, this is not 5 over 4, and that's a common mistake. People will just want to do what they did on the previous one and cancel out the sine and arc sine and write their answer as 5 over 4. Can't do it on this one because 5 fourths is outside of that domain restriction of negative 1 to 1. Now, here we go. We're moving on to cosine. And for cosine and arc cosine, what we want to do with our first problem here, arc cosine is our outside function, which means we're trying to find an angle. So I'm trying to find an angle, which means my domain restriction is going to be between 0 and pi. So i got to figure out, is this 11 pi over 12? Is that between 0 and pi? And if you were to change pi to so that it's got a denominator of 12, pi is the same thing as 12 pi over 12. And 12 pi over 12 is more than 11 pi over 12. So that would definitely fit because this is where pi would be right here. So 11 pi over 12 is going to be pretty close to that. And for arc cosine, remember, we've got to be in one of those first two quadrants, quadrant one or two. So this one, your answer is going to be the angle 11 pi over 12. So that, again, is one where you just take that shortcut kind of where those two would cancel out and then you'd be left with your with your resulting angle. Now for this, our inside angle is negative pi over 4. So if I kind of Think about that and draw where that is on the unit circle. So negative pi over 4 is down here in quadrant number 4. Now I want an answer that is up either in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2 because limited in that range to 0 to pi. So I need to get all the way into one of those two quadrants. But what I need to do is pay attention again. ASTC here, that's going to help me out. Now the function I'm working with is cosine. So down here in quadrant number 4, cosine is positive, whereas when I take a look at where I, my domain is restricting me to, quadrant 1 or quadrant 2, cosine is positive only in quadrant number 1, so that means the resulting angle I want has to be in, in quadrant number 1, not quadrant number 2. So how do I get from quadrant number 4 all the way up here to quadrant number 1? So I'm going to go up this way, I'm going to move in that direction, counterclockwise 90 degrees or pi over 2. So what you can do is just say, okay, take the angle you're given, negative pi over 4, and what you're going to do is add to that pi over 2 or 90 degrees. When you get a common denominator, most people could probably do this part in their head, but when you write everything out, you get 2 pi over 4 for pi over 2, and when you combine that, you'll finally end up with the answer of pi over 4. So this particular one, the arc cosine of cosine of negative pi over 4, that composite function gives you a resulting angle of pi over 4. Now here's two more, and again, these ones are a little bit easier to do because all we need to do is make sure when we're trying to find the trig ratio, now we're looking at this piece right here, x has to be between negative 1 and 1. Now since 4 over 7 is definitely within that range, our answer for the first problem is just 4 over 7. For the second problem, cosine of arc cosine of negative 7 thirds, this is definitely not within that range of negative 1 to 1. 
because this negative 7 over 3 would be negative 2.3 repeating which is definitely outside of negative 1 to 1 so again this one there is no solution or you could write it as the empty set all right so the first one has an answer but the second one does not because of domain restriction now we've got a couple more to do because we've got our tangent function here so we're going to go ahead and take a look at this one now we have arctan on the outside which means we're trying to find an angle so now I've got to look and see is negative pi over 7 within that range of pi over, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and again if you get stuck on this because some people might know this right off the bat but if you totally get stuck change negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 change that to the least common denominator between 2 and 7 so that's going to end up being something over 14 and in this case we'll have negative 7 pi over 14 and positive 7 pi over 14 for my angle and negative pi over 7 so if I change that so that is in terms of 14 that's going to be negative 2 pi's over 14 which is definitely within that range right there so this again I can kind of use that shortcut if I recognize that and some of you may already do that that's just going to be negative pi over 7 for a result there on this one 3 pi over 5 and again now I've got 5 in the denominator and 2 in the denominator so I've got to change my domain restriction negative pi over 2 my least common denominator is tenths so I'm going to go negative 5 pi's over 10 and 5 pi over 10. So that's going to be my domain restriction that I'm looking for for arc tangent. Now the angle is 3 over 5, 3 pi over 5. So that angle is the same thing as 6 pi's over 10. Now is 6 pi over 10 between negative 5 pi over 10 and 5 pi over 10? No, it's actually bigger than 5 pi over 10. So I can't use that. But I've got to figure out where that is. So let's kind of go ahead and we'll draw kind of our unit circle here. 6 pi is over 10. If I knew that pi over 2 is 5 pi over 10, now over here where pi is, that'd be the same thing as 10 pi is over 10. So 6 pi over 10 is somewhere up here in quadrant number 2. But my domain restriction for our tangent, remember I want to be in either quadrant 1 or 4. So I've got to take this angle that I'm given and I've got to get back into either quadrant one or quadrant number four. So what I need to do next is just pay attention to this piece right here. Remember again, all students take calculus. Since I'm dealing with the tangent function in quadrant number two, the sine of the tangent function in quadrant two is negative, which means in quadrant one or four, the angle that I want to end up getting will have to be down here in quadrant number four because tangent is also negative in quadrant four. So what I want to do then is figure out what that angle is and to do that I'm going to have to go from quadrant two backwards this way. So what I'm going to do is actually since I'm going half a rotation around I'm just going to subtract pi. So I've got three pi over five is my initial angle and I'm going to subtract pi. Well, pi is the same thing as 5 pi over 5. And then when you combine those two and you simplify that, you just end up with negative 2 pi over 5. So all of this, the arctangent of tangent of 3 pi over 5 is the same thing as negative 2 pi's over 5. And that's it. That's all you got to do. There's several other approaches that you might see out there. I just like this one because it's easier for me to kind of think about it in this way and I can add and subtract pretty pretty easily so I go about it this way so if you get stuck on unit circle this might help you out now the last thing that we're doing is we're going to take a look at these two problems and again these ones are going to involve the tangent function as being our outside function which means then we're looking for a trig ratio now here we've got 4 over 7 on the inside and so now everything I wanted to be between negative infinity and infinity and 4 sevens is definitely within that range so my answer for the first problem is just going to be 4 over 7. On the second problem I've got tangent of arc tangent of 3.141 well 3.141 is definitely also within that range of negative infinity to infinity so here our answer would be 3.141. That's a lot of stuff in this video. I know, you know, there's a lot of things going on and a lot of small details to pay attention to, but I know you guys can do it. So just take your time, make sure you evaluate everything correctly, and, and 
the main thing is just being able to understand those properties. Are you looking for a trig ratio or are you trying to find an angle? Once you have that down, I think everything else will start to fall into place. Thanks for watching this video. I know we're done with this one. And by now, you should be able to find the exact value for the composition of trig functions. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great day. Peace out.